Aryan Chala. Is that how I pronounce your last name? Chala? Chala. Yeah, that's fine. Like it's Aryan Chala. Chavala. Chavala. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let, let's start to the podcast, but right? I should have asked that before we press the recording. Okay. So Aryan, my question to you is why would I call you my favorite student who I've never taught? Does that even make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. But the, the best part is, I would say that we have worked together. Uh, that's one of the reasons why. Um, and that's why we had the most moments. So, for example, if you just taught me, I would be like many of your other students. Like you could say that, you know, there's so many students there. I feel like because we worked together, we had more times to talk and collaborate on different projects. And also you gave me a lot of opportunities. I will mention that. <laughs> that was a, cra a crazy amount of work. You earned that a I number of, to do. yeah. You earned a lot of opportunities. <laughs> earned um and then i got to i got to work with you as well and that's why uh, i would say that that's what started our relationship when i was uh, doing my co-op at uh in the in the row building for the most our first co-op my first job so i was very impressionable like i was like oh let me see all the professors coming in now see uh sam i just walk by and be like okay he's a new kid on the block now <laughs> let me see uh what's he up to and then uh, you start giving me some little work and that's how it got kicked off I think because we worked together and I, I was able to like ask you a lot of questions because it was like office hours, private office hours. I could mm. come and just bombard you with a ton, tons of questions because uh, if you have like office hours for classes, I will usually come to you with some type of purpose. Like, although this was for work purposes, but it was also because of my first job and I was trying to learn from you as much as possible while in school or in courses, I would come to you with a certain purpose that, okay, can you solve this question for me? And then I'm just gone. So I think that was a different setting, maybe. And also my job, uh, like, like majority of my projects were initially with you. So I had more time to just communicate. So that, that was the first reason. And then I believe we just stayed in touch. And it was also because I remember one of the reasons why I, I love talking to you also was one of the, the protein powers just kept on coming in. I'm like, who gave me this? Oh. <laughs> What's going on there? The mystery boxes. I would come. I would come to work, and suddenly I'm like, "Oh, there's a creatine right here. There's a, there's a box right here." I'm like, "What's going on?" Uh, yeah, you were, you were very helpful when I was like, "Oh, I got something protein powder," and I wasn't like quite liking the flavor. It's like, "Well, what do you do?" And I'm like, "Well, maybe Arnon would want some protein." And like we talked about training. So you did a really. Um, first of all, I did not know that was your first job. Um, I, although I, I guess in hindsight, I'm not surprised. But what really impressed me and why I, I really wanted to keep working with you. Um, is that normally when I work with students, um, maybe we had a class together and they like, you know, they come to me during office hours and they see if there's any projects and maybe there'll be a project. And like, so we go from classroom to like working together uh, and maybe back in the classroom. But you were the first student that, um, you know, we, you were on the fourth floor and you were like, hey, do you have anything to work on? And yeah. we kept, you know, we built it like that. But I would never have known that that was your first, um, that your first like kind of foray into the working world so like how did you know to like because here let me just embarrass you a little bit you were very like um enthusiastic you were detailed you wanted to help and you wanted to learn and contribute so like how much like how and like how would uh, a, a student emulate that so but thank you for those words kind of words but I, I would say that um when I first came in it was my first job, right? And because in Dubai, I'll just give some context. Uh, so in Dubai, you're not allowed to work until you're 21 because it's like the visa laws, etc. So I never got the opportunity. Yes, I, I I did some work with my dad in real estate, etc. But again, it's working for your dad. So it's like, it's pretty calm. It's not professional, as professional as it can be. And I think it was when I came to Canada, like it was like 2021 fall and the next semester itself I was working. It was just that, you know, I was away from home and I was just looking for something to do. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm wired a bit that way, but I'm like, I can't sit idle because I was like a restless nature of, of mine. So I was like, I got to do something. And like right now, if I just sit to sit on my ass and like just uh, like do a couple of things here and there, I need to, I have to reach out to someone. Because, and also one thing I learned with working with my dad was that you have to do outreach. Like you got to mm. take the first steps because again, especially if someone is in a state that's busier than you, like he, he or she has a lot to do on their plate. You got to do two things. First is you got to catch them at a good time or at least like be polite and ask them, be upfront and just be like, do you need anything? Because 
And second is you have to also give, provide some value. You can't just be like, okay, can I just talk to you about some some uh, just random things? It's fine because professors will do that. But again, they have to be mindful of the time because they have a million things going on for some, at least for during exams or assignments, et cetera, classes. So those two lessons are carried forward. And I'm like, if I really want something in life, I got to go take it. So I was like, okay, let me just reach out to everyone or all the professors because I was free for a lot of time. And I was like, at least the word, like, I'm not here to make money right now because the money will come later on. So I'm like, at least I can learn something, at least in during my co-op. So uh, the idea was reach out to people and provide some help, like give some give some value to them because otherwise it'll just be like one of those emails like, oh yeah, can we just meet to talk about like, et cetera, which is fine. But if you, if you provide some help or value, et cetera, and you get to learn something from them because they will be willing to help you out. And uh I would say that you can just build relationship from there. And that's exactly how it, it, it went. So that was yeah. why I was just very, and plus professors, I, I always look up to them. Like professors are pretty cool because they teach people, they teach the generation. So mm-hmm. I was like, why not make a few friends while I'm here? Yeah. I mean, help, helping people is definitely um, a way in which, one second, sorry. Um In the theme of everything, um, as you're talking kind of before we got on live, uh, it's been, uh, you and I are in a state of flux right now, so no different. I have a couple of puppies that decided to do some barking, so hopefully that doesn't come through. Um, I will say that um, not all, um, it's not necessarily the position, but it really is the person um, that, that makes the position, right? Because I've had roles where here's like the the state, but it's what you bring to it. So like just kudos. And now I look back at um, kind of things that I've published and think projects I've contributed to. And I'm like, that's Aryan. Like in the um, acknowledgement, oh, that's Aryan. Like oh, yeah. we're working on something right now. And I'm really hoping like we've been trying to push it through for a long time. And you are like the first listed on the acknowledgements. Um, and it relates back to one of our projects during your co-op. And I'm like, oh, like for our whole team, including yeah, you, I'm like, I want this to, I want this to grow out. So yes. no, it's, it's really cool for me to kind of see how far you come. Cause that was, would that have been second, was it second year? Was it? Se- yes. Yeah, second year, second semester. Uh, second semester. It was like right yeah, after second- COVID. So the first year was online for me. And then I just, when I came in, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So like, it's, it's really cool for me to see that. And I, I think it would it be fair to say that in no point, um, you ever wanted to become an accounting major, would that be relatively fair? Uh, at no point, I would say that when I looked at your enthusiasm and Tammy, I spent some time with Tammy as well. And she was, um, super nice. And she also told me about accounting, et cetera. And then uh, I remember another professor, but it was at the stage, yes, I would say no, I wasn't interested. I was very good at it school and I, I did very good in my classes as well. But it was just something that, okay, without uh, offending anyone, I just found it kind okay. of boring. And I was like, I would love to do it. I know the value of it, but just not for the rest of my life. That's it. That's, think, that was what I thought. Yeah. And not to like put you on the spot, but why I, I thought that that was significant was because you still built relationships and you saw still found ways to contribute. And then as we talked we found things that were more in your wheelhouse. So for example, I had a colleague who was doing research on um, non-fungible tokens in the food industry. And then you ended up um, being, I think the first undergrad research assistant that she's ever worked with. And she has a, like, you know, she has a high bar. So, you know, there's still the possibility of that manuscript coming out and being published with your name as a co-author. So like, I think what's really cool is that you're not like, well, I want to be in international business or, oh, I want to be in finance or, oh, I want to be, and then only pursuing that silo. Because as you know, um, maybe you knew then, but you definitely know now, there's no accounting role. There's Mm -hmm. no finance role. There's no sales role. It's all like smushed up together where you got to pick and choose and pull and highlight. So like kudos to you. And I hope that um, you know somebody else who's going in their second year that's listening to this or, you know, doesn't matter their third year or they're graduated and then they can kind of think outside like, Oh, how can I make the most out of this situation? Yes. And that's very true because I, although I wasn't like, although like accounting wasn't my favorite subject, that's actually a very good point because 
it was basically like i had two aspirations one was that i i wanted to just communicate with people and learn from whoever i could like i even spent time with supply chain professors like i didn't even like right. supply chain and the next thing you know i was spending time with them because it's like you got to take the opportunities you get like i know some people like obviously want to get invest in banking etc but they have to take steps for it if you just sit there and you don't take steps for you know contacting people in investment banking it's not going to fall in your lap so you, whatever options you get, people you can talk to. I'm sure professors itself can teach you a lot of things that you never knew. So I was in a, you know, like people say libraries, et cetera. I was there. I was in that zone where professors are there that can teach me a lot of things. I'm like, whoever has the time, whoever like can give, give me a little time of their day, I don't mind taking it. And another aspiration, a second point why I was keen to learn from anyone and everyone was because it was the nature that I wanted to do something on my own, like in startups, et cetera. And that's still my goal. Like, that's the ongoing process. It's like, um, that's one of the reasons why I currently work for a startup is because I know that every part of commerce, you can say, is important. Like every single part is important. If you're, I mean, the mistake anyone could ever make is ignoring one. Like, you know, people might say that, oh, marketing, for example. I know that students amongst us are like, oh, marketing, is there's no need of it. Or like, it's just, uh, it's not really needed to learn. You don't need to learn marketing and just do it. But you can't just do it without knowing some basics at least. So everyone can, everyone, each and every single professor or at least a student can teach you something. And I think that was my second motive because I was like, first, I need to get, take the options I get. Second is that I also want to broaden my like scope a little bit more as much as I can. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, definitely very impressive. And what was nice is I remember at the time kind of, you know, uh, we were coming out of COVID, as you said, and during lockdowns, I was like, oh man, like I really wanted to try jujitsu. And then I found out that you were training jujitsu. So we ended up talking about jujitsu a little bit. And then we ended up not training together, but um, one of the people that you started training with ended up being somebody that I met. And then we kind of talked about that. And so it was like yeah. one of those small, small world uh, moments uh, for sure. And, but I loved being able to kind of talk to you about it and be like, well, how does it actually work there? And kind of like understanding a bit more. Um, so in that aspect, like you were the teacher and I was the student, right? And that's yeah. kind of the, the nature of like jujitsu, it's a lot of like um, non-hierarchical, right? On the mats, you're just, you're rolling, you're, you're training. Yeah, it's, it's like your, uh, your life outside of uh, like jujitsu, the mats, it doesn't, doesn't call you with anything. Like it's like what you can de demonstrate, how, what's your nature in, uh, on the mats that really dictates everything. It's like, a, it's almost like, uh, <laughs> not people might say escape, but it's, like a second life you have it over there and whatever you do there you uh like the basics of it is be uh, be nice to everyone and then experience trumps everything like experience and like will and the curiosity to learn which is a applicant in the real world as well but it's almost like a fresh restart to your day like you know the maths i'm a different person i aspire to be better every single time like you can carry principles between each other but still it's pretty cool yeah ab absolutely so i really appreciate you kind of uh you know showing me a bit about that world and it was it was absolutely great. I uh, ended up uh, getting to really know one of the coaches who opened up his own gym and uh, yeah. we co-authored that um, that book together. So it was nice to be mm -hmm. able to kind of use my, a bit of my educational skills to both learn better about jujitsu and um, have a guide for him to share. And yeah, I mean, it's just, a, it's a cool community. And like you said, um, who you are off the mats uh, doesn't matter. You know, like you're in your building mm -hmm. skills on the mats that you can bring and then apply off. So no, I... Thank you. That, that was a lot of a lot of fun for me. But, but I would say, like, I've never met a professor ever in my life. Like, so far, I've gone through at least 25 professors right now for the whole four years. None of them have ever taken, like, oh, I do jiu-jitsu and I'm going to try it too now. Like, I, I know I know Sam, uh, Sam is, uh, has done rugby. That's why I kind of, like, I was like, maybe she'll try it. But she's done rugby. Rugby is quite difficult. Like, I went, I tried rugby once and I got, I got pretty uh, smashed. So <laughs> I would say that if she can do rugby, I, I, I'm sure she can handle jiu-jitsu, but I wasn't yeah. sure. And you took it and, and that was kudos to you because people, I've been telling jiu-jitsu, like I've been pushing that narrative, like, oh, like jiu-jitsu is good. It's good for you. Like it's less getting punched in the face. It's more rolling. It's more technical. It's like chess. Uh, but you just took that and you're like, okay, let me, why not? Let me just go and try it out. So that was pretty impressive to see. I told all my friends about that. I was like, I cannot believe a professor just did jujitsu. Like that's impossible. I like, you know, I couldn't fathom it. I know that Anika, another one of the co colleagues like in commerce, yeah. she does it. She's a purple belt, which is crazy, even crazier. She does. Yeah. Yeah. She does. She's a purple belt. I think so. Nice. 
I, th- I think so. Uh, I, I, yeah. I didn't know that, but I just remember it right now. And it was like a, it's like a crazy thing when you see your professionals outside of their work attire and you're like, oh, like, oh, okay, you do other things too. Like, <laughs> you know, you have yeah. hobbies. <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on here? I mean, uh, one of my proudest moments. Um, well, first of all, one of us realizing in jujitsu that you can take skills from there. Like, and here's one tangible one um, is like getting smothered, um, like, being mounted and being smothered and like trying to trying to escape and being so tired and like somebody's like like sleep and you're just like just not enjoying life um I then took it so I did some media a little bit later and I felt Mm -hmm. like lots of the same sensations and like I'm like okay what do you do you breathe through it you think about your skills you like try some things and you learn and reflect but you don't panic right you just don't panic because you'll get more tired and you'll just you know probably yeah, it won't end well. So just don't panic. Um, the other thing is, uh, I remember being in class and I think somebody asked something or we talked about like jujitsu came up and this one student was like, and I was like, oh, you know, and I think I said like triangle choke or I used uh, like a some sort of blood choke. He was like, no, that's not a triangle choke. That's a guillotine. And I was like, I'm pretty sure it is, but like you win. And then two minutes later in front of the whole class, he's like, I have Googled it. You are right. <laughs> 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 so, you know, it's a little like, wind to get it makes your day a little bit you're like yeah i knew <laughs> yeah no so thank you and uh yeah definitely definitely isn't fun so i'm cognizant of time um especially and and data and whatnot so thank you for being so flexible um to make this work i do want to know how did you like how did you consciously or so unconsciously choose to make the most out of your undergrad experience because I will say I feel like you did you use that same effort and um positive attitude and willingness to learn um I saw it go throughout so tell me if there was anything else you added on or kind of was it the momentum that kind of picked up so you did that work in year one year two and then kind of as you got to like year three and four you started seeing like the outputs really like you know the investments start to flourish kind of tell bring me through a yes, little bit so, of all that. that's a very good question because I, I it's a good reflection session for me I would say just before graduation coming in so it's it's one of those things but I, I would say um I think it was it was like I kept that drive because I knew that I was finally on my own and I had to do something because I, I, I had this sensation that, you know, I want to do something like something of effort. I, to, I just want to do something in my life that I'll be proud of. So I was like, I'll keep that hunger going. Initially, there was a lot of ups and downs. Don't get me wrong. I was not a very productive uh, lad every single day of the week. But it was just that I, I did everything, as uh, Sam mentioned, with, with intention. Like, everything I did was not just like, oh, I'll sit there, I'll do it, because it's it's not going to be reactive. It's going to be proactive. Like, I had whiteboards. I remember for all my workouts, for a full year straight, was tracked with a whiteboard. Like, every single workout was tracked. Every single rest day, et cetera, was tracked. So I did that just because I want to be intentional. Like, even if I skipped training, I was lazy. I just draw it down. Like, okay, you you missed your workout. It is what it is. I move on to the next day. And it could also reflect end of the month. So that was kind of fun. But I think all those systems that I put into place slowly started paying dividends over like this two year period. Because I remember year four, I would tell you, was the best year of my college life academically and like in, in socially, just everything started clicking a lot more because of the system that I put into place for the first two years. The first thing was just put curiosity and eagerness to learn. And then I believe that uh, just tinkering the systems, and I remember the co-ops, especially. I would say that any student, uh, like out there that is into that in, is it like you know into the co-op program for in commerce or any other engineering and like computer science, you name it. My recommendation would be to try different co-ops mm. outside of your field of comfort. Like sometimes you feel like oh, like you know this. If I want to get into some type of career, this is the way to go. Like I want. A, a linear path towards my career yes it makes sense i understand you got there's some steps you have to follow but i'm like in my mind i was like the f- I'll, i will never get a pocket of time of four months four month windows in my life to ever do it i know I'm, uh, I'm going to a different tangent but i would say that this is really important in the sense that you use those pockets of time to learn a lot of, about yourself and i believe during my co-ops i learned a lot which were applicable for my fourth year for example one of my uh, i would say the biggest change that like you would say in my whole degree was Victoria, coming to Victoria for four months straight because that was outside of Halifax where there was no university to comfort me. I had no one to like tell me that, okay, it's a university, you have different students here. 
Yeah, it's and I'm in a different country, so I already come here. I'm going to one coast to another coast. Yes. It's an island, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know anyone here. So uh, that that was the, the that was shock value which I got, and so all of a sudden I'm like on my own. I don't have any of those uh, first week, all week friends you have, etc. And that's why I actually found uh, and fell in love with jujitsu even more and stuff like that. The and I would say I learned a lot about myself in terms of even being comfortable with my own voice because I wasn't comfortable with it. I was like, I don't know, I maybe sound weird. Uh, maybe I'm too quick with my words, etc. And being in Victoria taught me a lot. That was part of the whole co-op experience. And and by the way, it wasn't sales. I was supposed to do finance. So this again shows that I was in research first, then went to sales, then I tried finance in my third co-op, which is again a fun time in Toronto. But I would say Victoria really changed me because I learned a lot about just business in general and how you shouldn't be afraid of taking some risk. And all of that, to conclude the whole uh, answer, would be that I applied whatever I learned in my co-op and also in school. Like, don't get me wrong, school also taught me a lot about friendships. I learned a lot about Friends. what people are downers, what people can help me and like uh, what people I can provide uh, help as well. Because some people in this world, like as much as you try, like, it won't work out for, and it's fine. Like people have their own journeys, which they're going across, and they're their own shit to get to get, uh, shit to follow or do or do by themselves. But I would say that um, academically, also you can learn by by different friend groups, and then in uh, with your co ops, you can learn something about professional and what you want to do with the rest of your life a little bit. You don't have to figure everything out, but at least direction, you know, somewhat. I would say. But yeah, yeah, pick things and like incorporate it because I think what's really cool is we're sitting here. Um, you're it's it's middle of May, so you're gonna uh do a nice cross country visit back. You're in Victoria. You'll do a cross country visit back to Halifax. Walk the stage. Get your uh, degree. Yeah. Um, have yeah. a really great celebration with friends and family. Uh, and then eventually make your way back to Victoria. So you know it's not yeah. linear. Um, you know, you did, that was your second co-op and yet now you're coming back, um, extending a role within the same organization, a startup. And that's going to be the next part of your journey where you're going to take whatever you learn here into the next part and the next part. So I love it. I love that you have, uh, really treated the co-op. Um, is it fair to say is like a treat your own, uh, choose your own adventure. Like you're kind of like, yeah. okay, it, like it, it now I have the skills with yours. Because the, the thing is, Sam, I, I didn't want to hammer this point because I've gotten a lot of, lot of friends where they're just like, oh, I just want to, like, especially immigrants. I would say that uh, people who are outside of the country are not like Canadian nationals. They have this thing where they're so obsessed with getting the personal uh, permanent residency or just safe jobs. Like you would say safe positions where you don't end up taking risks. And trust me, I, I was also, I understand it's a difficult economy. Not everyone has the same lifestyle or like same opportunities as some other people. I understand it's, it's not a fair world. But at the same time, I feel like we need to like take a bit more risk because again, we got to throw ourselves out there uh, mm. a, a bit more. Like, because again, we're new and we just got to do it. We got to, we, and even if we don't get what we want, eventually you have to climb and understand, okay, this is what we do and just uh, move on, learn and then go from there. If that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. Hey, would um because you're uh you know have a finance degree and because you're in sales, uh, which I find yeah. like I feel like we'll connect on this part. Would you say that it's fair to say that there's both the risk of action and the risk of inaction, but perhaps we don't often look at the risk of inaction? So if I don't do anything, if I don't make a choice, if I don't talk to that professor, like nothing bad will happen. Exactly. That's what, that's what you sales as well. It, it got hammered even more. Uh, and that's one of the things. So, for example, I'll give you an example of uh, Waterworth or like, uh, for example, uh, actually like a student for, yeah, like if you're reaching out to different professors or if you ask uh, anyone about anything, the worst they can do is say no. Like, you know, if it's even if it's asking a girl out, for example, if you're doing that, the worst they can say is no, and then you move on with your day. You're like, you shoot your, you shoot your shot and then you just bounce. So like, you know, it's fine. Like, yeah. oh. you learn from some of your mistakes and you move on. Because the thing is, I, I believe that right now we have most, we have the stamina and uh, I would say we, we are more like, how do I, I want to put this into words. There is no downside of getting uh, said no or failing right now. Like you can fail a hundred times right now and it'll not affect you as much because this is your time to learn. Like when you're, when you're a family and you have something to lose and then you're going around and like, it's like opportunity cost starts rising up because you got to spend, you got to worry about your family too. So I, when it's a student, 
if someone says no to you or if someone rejects you, you can just move on. Just go on to the next thing because you got to almost be a bank of collecting failures and collecting no's. You got to just keep yeah. collecting it one by one because each one can be uh, a learning lesson. Again, learn from them. Do not do not do the make do not make the same mistake 10, 15 times. You can make it a few times here and there, yeah. but like just keep collecting all those different no's, and eventually you you will realize that oh I've I've got I've gotten some momentum. I know a lot more than I did four years ago. So like that that's one of the things. If you just if you keep chasing the yeses, like, oh, yeah, like, I'll take the easier path, etc., then you won't learn much. And you'll just be stuck in that, as people say, the, the comfort zone. So that's one of the things, key important points, I would say, take risk, collect those no's, and then move on. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I had a conversation with somebody once, and it's like, if you're not hearing no's, if you're not failing, like, are you really, are you really putting yourself out there? Are you really like, yeah reaching your potential or close to what your potential could be. Hey, um, you said something once where, and I don't want to misquote you, but I believe it was like, you either win or you learn. Is oh, that yeah, correct? Yeah. I like that. I no, love no, that. No, 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 that's, that's what I did. Because the first thing, uh, I was also that I should remember, because that's the first, in my office, right? Like, they're, they're lovely people. They actually kept a small sticker for years. They just kept it there in my desk. As soon as I came back to my office, I was wrote it out. I was like, win or learn, you don't lose. There is no losing. It's just like learning. It's like, okay, you move on and then you win next time. Who knows? So yeah, like I always say that. That's one of the quotes I want to live by until I die, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, what are you looking forward to um, in the next, I don't know, five or 10 years? Like what are some like big lofty goals that if you were to like listen back to this in five or 10 years, um, you might be completely in a different direction, but like if you were to talk to Aryan in five years, uh, what's something that you think a direction that you'll be going in? It can be work, um, it can be jujitsu, it can be outside, work personal. Because, you know, we don't really want to put necessarily your current employer on the spot or not on the spot, but just like in general, uh, anything that you're comfortable sharing. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. But uh, like I told my current employer as well, this, like they, they know that we, we, we treat each other really well. So I've told them that one of my aspirations is to, try a couple of startup ideas that I have, uh, like just for fun, because at the yeah. end of the day, I, I actually love business like as a whole, like though everything combined is one of my favorite things to do, like just problem solving. So I want to try a couple of things, even if I feel, I said, winner learns, you just keep yeah. moving forward. You, I just want to try those ideas. At least when I look back uh, 10 years later, I'm like, you know what? I did try different ideas. Like I wasn't just sitting there doing nothing. So, uh, you know, like it's like I gave it my shot. If, even if I fail, it's yep. fine. Like, I have no regret. That That's my most important thing, which I'll have because right now I have the stamina to do everything I want. Because for me, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking way too ahead, but like after 30, when I have like children coming in, et cetera, or like um, well, suppose whenever. Also, I, I would... also, after 30, shit breaks. Like you just breaks, lower. I know, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the decline people say but uh no i'm, <laughs> I'm joking but i, I would almost say that i, I want to get into the family life more invest more time there so now it's like i would say i'm gonna try for more like professional goals hit all of them as much as possible for the next eight years but also not lose sight of the important things like family because again now my parents are healthier in 10 years time who knows how the health can be right so spend moments with them whenever i get the time the small pockets of time so those are the things you remember the most so while you're grinding 80% or 90% of the year, you can also spend those 10% 10, 10 with important people in your life, you know, like with family or friends that are very close to your professors, you know, who, are, who have changed your life for the better. So I would say that uh, that's something that I aspire to for the next maybe eight to 10 years, five to 10 years time. That's, yeah, in short. I, say. I love that. Hey, Aryan, um, I'm going to turn off the recording now, but any, any last words or advice or anything that you want to say to aspiring uh, Dal students and future Dal grads or management learners in general? Hmm. I, I would say, <laughs> uh, I would say um, risk as much as possible like that, that, that uh, right now in the next 10 years, risk whatever you can. Don't obviously not 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 to the point of your health. Like don't sacrifice yeah. everything you ever want. Don't sacrifice your health. I would say invest in your health and okay. risk. Risk the uh, I would say failure. Like don't be afraid of failure. Risk whatever you have. Just to summarize, that's one of the key points I keep pushing for. And also learn to enjoy life whenever you can. A little bit. It's in small. I know it's contradicting. It's it's hard no. to find that balance. I understand, but. 
learn to enjoy life uh, with people that you really want to be intentional with your time that's uh, i would say those are the four points like be intentional because intentional can be doing work that you actually like so you can grind on shit that you want to do and spending time with people you actually want to don't don't be fake that's one more, one of the last things i would say like there's no point of being fake because eventually people will see through that and then it'll just make you unhappy because you have to keep up a facade and yeah. people won't like you as much or they won't feel like bonding with you because they can see it's a it's a facade so yeah i would say those are the key points that i have learned over time because i i i was a time out sometimes fake a persona to fit in and that never played out well for me ever like in the starting years of my life so i was like no just don't do it it's better to be yourself better to extent. be but hated keep for who you are <laughs> than liked for who you're not right because it's yeah. exhausting yeah. but this but oh, one more thing i would like to say is yeah. that do continuously try to improve yourself like do try to get a better version of yourself not a version of mm. someone else don't get stuck in that phase where it's like oh just be like i don't i've heard the whole this advice multiple times where it's like be yourself etc but yes be yourself and be true to your nature and like certain things about your life which you which you value a lot like certain aspects but also strive to improve like that's where the risk yeah. element comes in. like you can't just be stuck where you are because that's what the 20s are right to improve I, I would extend it beyond. Uh, I, I think that you don't have to stop at your 20s, uh, especially for that ongoing uh, improvement. So uh, maybe yes. in 10 years we'll uh, or eight years, we'll revisit and we'll talk about advice for people in their 30s. <laughs> but I, I just want to like, I'm like, it's not, you know, that small, small incremental improvement um, is something that we can take in and be lifelong learners and lifelong contributors. Um, I just want to add one more thing that I've observed uh, you doing and that every time you level up, you level up those around you and those uh, for you that come after you. So uh, in true spirit of not only doing that in your day-to-day -day life, you've done that here. So Aryan, thank you so, so much for coming on and having just a, a conversation uh, that we'll, we'll share on the internet. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. You too.